Sammy Sargent, doing outreach and education for the CCDC. Today, I'm going to show you how to use Conquest to do a substructure search with 3D data included. Let's get started! To begin the search, launch Conquest. On Windows, I simply double-click the icon. The main Conquest window opens. Along the left-hand side, you can see all the various search types that you can perform. Across the top of the window, the tabs indicate the steps in the search process. To start the substructure search, click the Draw button. Here we have the Draw window. Across the bottom, we have atom types and bond types and templates. Along the right-hand side of the window, we have 3D parameters and contacts, which we will add as part of the search. First, we need to sketch our molecules. To start the sketching, click the fennel ring in the templates menu. Now click anywhere in the draw menu. Now we have a fennel ring. Now we want to draw a carboxylic acid group. Click the carbon atom in the atom types list across the bottom of the window. Then click the carbon atom in the fennel ring and drag down. Now we have placed a carbon atom. Now we need to add the oxygen atoms of the carboxylic acid group. To do this, change the atom type to oxygen by clicking in the list. Then click the carbon atom and drag to create two oxygen atoms. One of the oxygen atoms needs a double bond. To do this, right click on the bond and choose type and double. Finally, we need to add a hydrogen atom on the other oxygen. Select the hydrogen from the atoms list, click the oxygen, and drag down to create the hydrogen. Now we have our first fragment drawn. For this example, we want to study the geometry around a hydrogen bond donor and this hydrogen bond acceptor here. In this example, we don't need to specify if it is a nitrogen or an oxygen hydrogen bond donor. So to select multiple atom types, click More, and then Other Elements. This brings up a periodic table from which you can choose any atom type you like. For this example, we want to choose nitrogen and oxygen. So first, tick the box that says multi-pick in picking mode, then click on the nitrogen and the oxygen to select them both. Click OK when you are done. This changes the atom type to QA. If we click in the drawing window, you'll see we've put a QA atom here, and down below it shows that the atom type is variable, either nitrogen or oxygen. Now we need to add the hydrogen to our hydrogen bond donor. Select hydrogen from the atom list, click QA, and drag to create the hydrogen. Now we have both of our fragments drawn. Our next step is to add 3D parameters to the search. To do this, click the box that says Add 3D. This brings up the geometric parameters window. First, we'd like to investigate the distance between the hydrogen and the oxygen hydrogen bond acceptor. To do this, click to select the hydrogen and then the oxygen. Here in the geometric parameters window, you see distance. We want to define this distance, so we click define. Now it asks us to choose a distance type. Since this is an intermolecular interaction, we want to select contact. Tick the box next to contact and then select OK. We want to define the contact, so we click Define. This window gives us the opportunity to edit our definition of this contact, but we will stick with the default, which is the distance within the sum of the van der Waals radius. Click OK. Now you'll see we have distance 1 listed in our parameters list. The next parameter we'd like to investigate is the angle around the, the hydrogen. To do this, click QA, H, and then O. Now you'll see our parameter has changed to angle. Click Define. And you'll see we have angle 1 listed now in our 3D parameter list. Finally, we'd like to investigate the distance between the donor and the acceptor atoms. So to do this, click QA for the donor, click O for the acceptor. And you'll see, even though these two atoms aren't bound to each other, there's a distance between them. We can define this distance. Again, we choose Contact, so click OK. We click Define to define the distance, and OK, because we don't wish to edit the interaction parameters. Now you'll see we have distance 1, 
angle 1, and distance 2 in our 3D parameters list. This is all we're interested in investigating right now, so we'll click Done in our geometric parameters window. Now we are ready to start the search. Click the Search button to bring up the Search Setup window. Here we can apply filters to make sure that we have the highest quality data. First we tick the box for 3D coordinates determined. We want to tick the box next to R factor and the radio button next to less than or equal to 5%. Finally, we want to make sure that we are only dealing with non-disordered structures, so tick the box next to only non-disordered. Now we can start the search by clicking Start Search. You'll see that the hit list is populated with the ref codes of the entries that match the search. We can scroll through one by one and we can see in red the fragments which match the search criteria and the parameters returned by the search. You'll see once the progress bar gets to 100% the search has stopped. On the right hand side of the window we can see information about the structure. All text shows us everything that is available about the structure. We can look at publication information, including the document DOI, so we could click this link to be taken to the journal article. We can see chemical information, crystallographic information, experimental information, and a 3D visualizer. This shows the interaction in 3D and also lists the distance parameters. When we're done looking at the data, click Diagram to return to the diagram. Now we'd like to analyze the data that we've pulled from our search. To do this, click Analyze Hit List, and then Analyze Data. Here you see we can add other information about our entries from the CSD. We're not interested in any of this information right now, so we'll just click Analyze in Mercury. We click the Data Analysis button to see the information from our search loaded into a spreadsheet. Here we have the ref codes and the parameters that we were investigating. So our angle, the distance between the hydrogen and the acceptor, and the distance between the donor and the acceptor. Let's look at the variation between the angle and the distance. To do this, click to select the angle column and the distance column. Now click plots and then scatter plot. This creates a scatter plot of our data showing the distance versus the angle. As you can see, there's a nice trend in the data such that the larger of the angle, the shorter the distance between the hydrogen and the acceptor. Let's see how the distance between the donor and the acceptor looks relative to this data. To do that, click Display, then Colors, and select Distance 2 from the drop-down list. Here you can see the data are colorized based on distance 2, or the distance between the donor and the acceptor. You'll notice that this distance varies as well as a combination between distance 1 and angle 1. You'll notice that we have a few outliers in our spreadsheet. For instance, this point here is well outside the trending data, and also it's blue so the color does not match what we would expect for distance 2. So to investigate this structure we can click on this point. You'll see now that the point is highlighted and the ref code is given and all of the other data is grayed out. If we look in the Mercury window behind our spreadsheet we'll see that the structure has been brought up in the Mercury viewer and we'll notice right away that this is not a typical organic molecule. So one thing we could have done in our search was we could have limited our search to only organic molecules. We could have also limited our search to make sure that we weren't looking at any oxygen atoms here that were bonded to another atom. Hopefully this has shown you a little example of how to add 3D information to your substructure searches in Conquests. For more information, please see our website or workshop materials. Mm -hmm.